going on guys? Another C10 video. Shocker. So today, I'm going to jack this thing up. It's burnout preparation day. So, I ordered a mini spool for this thing because it's a single burner, which you can't have that. I also got all these tires. So there's actually a local guy, a local dirt track guy. He sells kind of half bore out uh, bias fly dirt track tires. So they're cheap. I put them on the old factory rims. So I figure these will probably be good to melt. Plus melting a bias fly tire is always, uh, is always fun. But I actually, the mini spools will come till tomorrow. So I'm going to get this thing jacked up, pull the plate off. Uh, take the little C-clips out, pull the axles, do that fun stuff. So I've actually never put a mini spool in. It's kind of instead of uh, welding up all the spider gears, this way if I hate it, take it out, put the spider gears back in, it'll be an opener end. I guess with the spool it kind of turns funny and stuff like that, but double the burnout. So it's worth it. But I'll get this thing up in the air and we'll start uh, tearing it apart. This truck's in the air. Uh... Pulled the brakes and stuff. Uh, I actually never even looked at the brakes on this thing, but it looks good. The wheel cylinders aren't leaking after doing them. Uh, I actually don't feel a big ridge in the drum, so they're probably still decent. Eh, not much left of the shoes, but not too bad. And actually, these axles on both sides, they're like shiny. They're not even rusty, so I don't know, maybe those have been changed at some point or something. I've never seen that. Usually it's rusty the whole way around. So that's that. So I got the catch pan out so the next thing is crawl under there and zip all the bolts off the inspection plate get all the oil out and start taking it apart so we'll get started on that So the cover's off. So this is your standard kind of open rear end. These are the spider gears in here. So basically what's going to happen is when you turn an axle, I'm going to show you here, these spider gears end up kind of taking up the slack and it doesn't end up spinning the axle on the other side the same way. It actually spins it backwards. So that's why you have a single burner. So in here is where the pause unit and all that would be, which is uh, many hundreds of dollars. So what I'm going to do is basically replace all these spider gears with a mini spool, which again I don't have till tomorrow. Uh, but that's how she goes. Anyways, so there's a little bolt here which holds in the center pin. Once you take that out, the pin will slide out and then you can start taking out all these little spider gears. And uh, you got to take the axles out as well. But I'll, uh, I'll kind of get started taking it apart and show you how it turns out. All right, so I got the uh, carrier all apart, took one spider gear out. Now the uh, axle, you can actually just you push it in, and when you set it, you actually pull it out, and there's just a couple little C-clips to hold it in. That's why you hear guys C-clip limiters and all that, because uh, if the axle or whatever, this all lets go, the whole axle will come right out. So all I gotta do is push the other side in, pop it out, and then the spider gears are all come apart. I'll pull the axles right out, and I'm basically done for right now. All right, so now it's all apart. Uh, to figure out the gear ratio, you just count the numbers or the amount of teeth on the ring gear and then on the pinion on the inside. So in this case, it's uh, 43 and 14, which is like a 308, which is just kind of generic, but uh, eh, it's good for burnouts. So I'm out of stuff to do now. That's this is what slips onto the axle, so it is splined, you can see that, so it's a 30 spline axle. So basically, I think what I'm going to get with the mini spool is it'll have two of these, but instead of being a gear, there'll be little blocks. 
one on each side of the axle and then the pin in the center and it'll lock them together so they will turn no matter what which would be cool except for turning so yeah that's that and yeah I'll actually we'll take a look at these axles here I'll get out of the truck and we'll show you so here's the axle I always pull them right out my old man always told me to you don't want them sitting with the weight on the seal I guess so in there are a set of bearings and a little seal to hold it in but this one here this axle actually still has a, a paper tag on it so between that and the fact that it's still kind of even on the inside shiny I'm thinking this thing's been replaced at some point in its life but maybe that's original if you guys know let me know in the comments but that's where we leave it for tonight because I'm out of parts so fingers crossed tomorrow that spool shows up and uh, I'll break clean out the uh, housing put the thing in fill it with gear oil and I should be done pretty uh, pretty simple little maneuver there but uh, I've never done it before so it should be good but see you guys tomorrow all right guys so it's the next day just got home from work had a little package in the mail the old uh, mini spool kit so that's what it is so just to kind of recap this is what came out of the rear end so these two gears end up uh, they're splined so they fit on the axle uh, as such so now what happens is the power comes into the ring gear all that stuff and it goes through here and these are the little spider gears so when you're cornering one wheel the outside wheel would have to turn faster than the inside wheel so that's what these end up doing they kind of take up that slack make it drive a little nicer but that being said it only puts power to one side uh, as opposed to like a pause unit it has a bunch of clutches and stuff in there so this is essentially the same thing and turns it into a locker so these little uh, side pieces, they're spline, so they're going to replace that little piece there. So same thing, this should just slip on like nothing. And instead of having these spider gears, it's got these blocks, so they go in between. And that's where that center pin that I pulled out is going to fit in and hold that all together. So it should be a pretty simple uh, fix or swap, I guess I'm going to fix. That's not broken. I want to keep these. So if I want to go back to open rand, I can. The only thing is those little C-clips I, I took out, I think you got to kind of grind them so they're kind of round on the edges and you got to flatten them out a little bit so they fit through here onto the axle. And then as the axle pulls out, a uh, little clip fills in there and that's what uh, holds all together. So that's that. I'm going to start uh, putting this all together. Should be pretty simple. Set you up on the tripod and we should have this done uh, momentarily. So a few more parts just to kind of show you. So this is how it's going to work out. Little pin fits in there. The bolt will go through the carrier, hold it in. These are the C-clips. So on the car itself, this is what you would actually do is you would uh, push the axle in further than it has to go. You would then put this clip in. And as you pull the axle out, it would uh, lock itself in place. And then you do both axles, then you would put those uh, locks in. At that point, uh, you, you wouldn't be able to push the axle in or out, so it kind of locks itself. Now, if you see how much it has to drop down, I don't think we have that much drop. So if the axle was only goes in a little bit, then that's kind of stuck in there. So that's why a lot of these guys, they end up just kind of slicing the sides on the internet. But I'm going to put the axles in and see if I can fit it in this way. Because if it moves in enough, I think that's uh, the best without modifying that. Alright, so both little blocks are in. And I got the axle on the one side. And so that's the factory little clip there. Unfortunately, it won't fit in. So this is what I had to do on the one. You see I just kind of got the sides off. These are round. And that allows it to slip in this little kind of recess part. So I push that in. I have to give it a whack with a hammer. There you go. So you can see it's sitting around the axle. Then I'll just pull the axle back out. And there you go. That's how it locks itself in. So pretty simple. So I gotta do the same on the other side. And then now, obviously, these aren't joined at all. That's where these little blocks come in. So that gets jammed in there. The pin goes through, holds it all together. And that's it. 
So I'll get the other side all assembled and we'll put these blocks in. Should be done. All right, so everything's back together. Hopefully you can see in there. The two uh, blocks are in with the pin through it. So now it's all, everything is locked together. Now when you spin the drive shaft, everything moves. So I'm just gonna clean up around here. Uh, I think there's actually a gasket on this, which actually isn't too bad, so I might just clean that up. Put a little silicone on there, bang it back together, fill it full of gear oil, and uh, hope for the best. I guess I never put one in before, but it looked pretty straightforward. All right, covers back on. I just filled it up with fluid, so it's super simple. I'm sure most of you guys know this, but a little sight plug holds a couple liters. And then just kind of let a little dribble out. Once it's level, you're golden. Uh, I always fill it up immediately when I'm done. If you're not, put a sticker or something like that or a note on the on the uh, steering wheel. You forget about this, it'll cause problems. But I'll uh, button that up, put the wheels back on, fire it up, and make sure they're both spinning. Wheels are on. Doors up. Let's fire this thing up. Make sure they both spin. So the only thing left now is to uh, put it up against the brakes and see what happens, I guess, right? Let's get right to that. All right. Well, let's just do a quick little one, see what happens. Uh, I mean, if it is posy, it might wag all over the place. So, yeah, we'll see. Also, these tires are expensive and someone's got to pay for them. So I got to take her easy. But wish me luck. Well, they both go. Truck sure a wild ride now. So we'll see how that goes. I didn't want to go too crazy. I'm facing the wall. And it actually moved over into my toolbox. So, eh. Get this thing out on the weekend, maybe. Go find some dry uh, concrete. See what happens. But uh, I also kind of was a little tame laying into it. I don't like doing burnouts into the garage. Out of the garage, I'm fine with. But that's it for this one. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one.